say it's amazing. Some of the music this morning really goes along with what I'm preaching on this morning. Uh, I'm going to be I'm, I'm just, uh, diverting our last sermon on um, the people in the to tonight. I just had my heart to do something different this morning. And uh, so we're going to talk about living for Him. Living for Jesus. Amen? I, I'll tell you, you, you know, just um, let's read this. We'll read the opening passage here. The first Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And then I'm going to my introduction. Hallelujah. I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you uh, the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, say or accept, the word means accept, um, Jesus Christ, being crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing but persuasive words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Why? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. Thank God for his word. Amen. Here we have Paul making a really powerful statement in the middle of this, um, uh, near the beginning of the book of the church of Corinth. He says, For I determined not to know anything among you, except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I mean, when you think about um, the heart of Paul here and what he's trying to get to, he wants to, you know, he says, I'm, not, I'm not interested in, in stupid arguments, in you know, petty arguments. You know, I remember last time I was in Estonia. And uh, when it wasn't last time, time before last. Um, you know, I get there and some of the guys that I was talking about in the Demona Bible school back in '92. You know, they're 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 New World Dictionary. Hallelujah. Full of new words you've never heard before and will never hear anywhere else. Better faith in literature. Praise the Lord. But, um, you know, when we got there, we were going to preach in the and, and went to one of the schools, one of the churches that one of the guys. And, uh, and then after when I had to eat, I went back to the house and eat and And then we were talking about drinking wine. So that was the hot new doctrine of the church. We are free to drink wine. And that's all they wanted to talk about. Right. If people are going to hell, and you want to prove to everybody that you think it's okay from Scripture, or from the lack of evidence, or the, or, or the lack of statement that you shouldn't, that, that it's okay. And that's all you can consume with, is run around. Paul said, I don't want anything among you except Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ. Your stupid little cultural petty argument don't mean anything. We need to spend more time trying to get people saved and doing the work of God than we do trying to find out if we get halfway thought and still go to heaven. Are y'all here? You don't know. I mean, you got, we got one church there and it puts it on their website. We drink wine and we have dinner. I don't care. I mean, I, I don't care what, you know, if you want to go to that, you know, and, 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 and but you don't put it on your website. And that let it tell everybody. And you better hope that some alcoholic will come and got delivered to your church. They'll see you out at dinner next week drinking. And that's there. But they're going to have a hard time with that. Well, I, I smoke dope, but I don't get high. Oh, come on now. Y'all hear you go home. These are arguments that the church gets involved in and spends all the time on that, that are of no, no value. Paul wouldn't come and give a special power to the church. I'm going to say something. You get somebody set free by the power of God, they, 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 don't, they don't need to drink wine and get filled into this. You get full of the Holy Ghost, you won't need a little, little sip to, to relax you. You need to pray in the Holy Ghost to get relaxed. And in other words, the church is looking for, for ways of man's wisdom to draw people in instead of walking in the power and demonstration of the Spirit. And Paul said, I, I was given no things among you except Jesus Christ and the crucified. And, um, you know, we get involved, and, you know, people always want to ask you these questions. There's some people, and then, you know, trying to witness to them that we know, hey, 
check your eyes and things all right. And then you can talk and the conversation what? It's meaningless. Are you hearing that home? You just need to go right back to what the truth of the Demonstrate the power of the gospel. Then everybody's going to see you. Oh, I'm telling you, you're anointed and good, everybody says, hogwash. Jesus didn't. Just like the Paul didn't. Hello? The king told him, he says, I'm almost out of the place. He didn't say he was the place. Almost. Are you here? There are people who rejected the gospel all the time and time and time again. From Paul. I mean, he's pretty good at what he's doing. Y'all hear you going home. Amen? So we don't need to get caught up in apologetics. We can just we can argue with sinners about, what, you know, where God came from. It's, it, it's, it's as bad as intelligence. Well, I can't even come up with one that's stupid. It's wasting your time. What do you need to do? Preach the gospel. Jesus said, you must be born again. How you repent and be baptized, you'll be saved. Hello? I don't like this. You just get out of my Christian. It's fine. My dog will tell you, your dog will see you. It's the Holy Spirit's job to just work on you. Are you here? It's not my job to convince you that I'm right. Now, here's the problem. The church is always trying to find the right argument to convince people. Instead of walking like Paul said in the next couple of verses down here, he says, And when I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling, none of was in the flesh. He said, in my speech and my preaching. In other words, his physical presence wasn't something impressive. He may have been a weenie. Hello. I mean, he could have been the weenie of weenies. You know, we got the King of Kings and the Lord, Lord Paul may have been the weenie of weenies. I mean, he may have been, you know, and there's, just, there's no evidence that he was some monster of God. You know, he wasn't Schwarzenegger for Jesus. He said, I was with you in, in, in weakness and fear, much trembling, he says, and, and in my speech, in my preaching. <laughs> Here you go. I'm not depending on the flesh. I'm not depending on the power of the weak. It's not my charisma. It's not my, you know, hand tailored suit. It's not the car I drove with you. It's not what kind of Rolex I have. It's not like the presidential or not. Come on. There are certain people who are. And you people who have not listen to you unless you're dressed like that and look like I'm telling you something, folks. We're putting too much weight in the church today. We're putting too much weight on the natural attraction to men to get them to hear the gospel. So when you go back to the book of Isaiah, in chapter 52, down there around 14, and goes into in chapter 53, it says this, that there was no form of comeliness that we should desire him. There wasn't anything about Jesus in the natural. <laughs> he wasn't good looking. He wasn't the charisma guy. He didn't have his, you know, bare head gel in him. Are you here? I, 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 don't, don't, don't think I'm condemning it. I'm just saying we have put so much emphasis on the church on the outside attraction of humanity. We're missing the very thing Paul said that he had to ask. He said, in my speech and my preaching, are you here? Was not with enticing words word of man to give them. This one is. But in demonstration of the Spirit and the power. Why? That the faith should not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power. We all, we go to church great conferences and they're talking about you gotta, you gotta dress like the world, act like the world. Look, I don't understand that. I'm not opposed to being wise. But when the emphasis becomes on truth, when the emphasis is on, we don't use that word anymore. Hallelujah. When the emphasis is you know, on, on being relative, getting folks healed is relative. Getting some devils out is relative. The power of God coming on them and saturating them. Hallelujah, it's relative. Whether you're in cowboy boots and a cowboy hat, or you're in some designer or skinny jeans or something. It ain't never going to happen. I'm just going to tell you, I ain't coming to church with skinny jeans. 
Because that's how I have the space I get back into. And I feel I'm going to 400 squat, 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 don't care what kind of car you drive. They don't care what your clothes look like. They don't care how hip or cheap you are. They don't care if you got a 1950 bus set or a 1990, I mean, a 2013 jail head, bird, I mean, a bed head, you know. And I still don't get the bed head. I don't get it. You know, get up out of bed, you know, and put stuff in to make it look like you just got out of bed. When I get out of bed, my head looks like that, I do something to it. And I'd be on the street, and I'd sleep, and, and if I pick my side, and for some reason, I'll pick my left side, and I'll get the hair going up, and I get a clot right here. When I go look at the mirror, I mean, I look like just something I've been doing about this. And I go out of the house, and the first thing I do is I, put, I wet it, get it down, cover it down, do something. I mean, even if, if I'm not getting ready to go out, I'm not walking around the house looking like that. People do it on purpose now. So, oh, whatever, you know? Y'all hear? People don't care about those things. What they want to know is if you got what it takes to get them free or get the answer to them. Amen. Y'all hear you don't have it. That's what it will be. You see, the emphasis in the church today is on the opposite. It's on it's on the, the coolness and all that kind of stuff. And, and we do kind of learn to be like Paul. I didn't come to the Christian world today. I didn't come to be cheap. I didn't try to dress up in a way that, that you know, it didn't offend anybody, it didn't upset anybody. I, I, I came to bring the power of Christ to you that will liberate you and set you free and bring you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Why? Because if you do it the other way, it's got to be the opposite. Paul said, I came not with the words of man's wisdom and a demonstration of the Spirit and the power that your faith should not let stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Now think about it. If your faith is in man's wisdom, what happens when you have a crisis? What have you done? Think about it. What have you done? Now, I'm trying to remember uh, the old uh, retro um, tip for both right and both. You could put a Dugan Bug body on it, and all that four or five different car bodies. You can get your little Volkswagen bug, and one of these little five glass kits. And take, your, you take the bug body out and put these kits on, and you right away, you thought you had some 1920, you know, cool looking, you know, retro car. The problem was, it was still the Volkswagen. And when you pull it up to the right, you're not really taking it, it's still a. Not like that. You know, you up, I mean, you're blind out of both sides of the I mean, you know, and you're still going 10 miles an hour. You red blind it, and you're going 10. Yeah, rear, rear, rear engine air cool. And you had that cool body on it. It was not work. It was nothing but a bunch of fiberglass made to look like something, and it didn't have the power, and it didn't have the real inside to what the other one had. And what we're doing in the church today, unlike Paul, is we're giving people something that looks like victory, that looks like you're going somewhere, that looks like, so to the appearance of other people, you got it going on. Until, what? You step on the ground. Is that what you have in here? You have a crisis. And when you look under the hood, you ain't even there, it's in the back. I came this way so your faith is staying in God's power and, 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 and the interest of power is it. And not in the way of the wisdom of man. Why? Because the wisdom of man is not going to put you over when you need help. No. We've got, we church, we have got to get back to living in a different vein than the world. And you can go minister to the Lord. Jesus went and ate and drank with publicans and sinners, but he didn't live with them. 
and he didn't live like that. He still had on a priestly garment that rose to the rest. He was still rabbi. Hello? When he went down there, everybody knew where Jesus was because they could see him. They could tell who he was. He could, they couldn't go, oh, well, where's he? Why is he the master of He was just like that. He was still the master. He was still the rabbi. He was still teaching. But he, he went to them with something. Remember this one time that they said it to Jesus? He spoke not like the he spoke to the followers and not like the Pharisees and the Pharisees. See, the power of God gets the people in a way that clearly is sin. And come and demonstrate the story of the gospel. Many women's hearts are transformed. That's why I don't believe the church should be, you know, watered down to the point of what I just get sick of. I believe that you come here and that my responsibility is the pastor. And my responsibility is being in other ministry as the pastor is to be the people who want to equip you for the work of the ministry. To live a life of victory. To overcome and to be able to face the enemy down and come out the head and not the tail. Above all, not the enemy. That's my job. That's not my job. My job is to quickly go get him. It's your job to go get him fed. Bring him in. And then they get the sign from him, bring him up in Christ so they're champions for Jesus. Come on now. The church is not the place to bring in a bunch of un- bring a bunch of unbelievers to come in and get them to become baby believers and never let them become mature believers. We're going to up in Christ. Amen. And so what Paul said to the church is, I came not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and power, which the faith is not saying the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And so we've got to learn that it's our job as believers is to grow in the power of God. Why? Because there are people you're coming in contact with who have cancer that nobody's going to get to. But I could just get it to my church, pass through, and might have a healing anointing. I'm like, no. But you've got to learn that God's anointed you to go into the world and lay hands on the sick and see them recover. You need to be on the work. Why did you just see that? What else is sitting there? Amen. They said, You have a relationship with him. Lay hands on him. And I was like, They got crazy. When they found out that he went to heal, they always thought, Oh, you go one of them churches. They they hang from the chandelier. It's like, We can't. Because we don't have anything. And if you hang from this thing, you will fall. They roll under the feet. You, you, you don't have feet. You can roll under the feet. Roll under the feet. Hello. Okay. Yeah, they just had all kinds of things to say about Pentecost. They hang from the They rolled out the front door of the church onto the top one. Get this next step up. I'd rather be with the ones who are crazy for Jesus than the ones who are just dried up and dead. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know them from a one wood Indian soldier out front of a wood Indian in front of a guy five and down. Hello. Okay. So, we're going to learn to live a life of power, life of victory, life of ministry. We're going to live for Him. Hello. You know, our focus doesn't need to be on how we can have the biggest church in the town. Our focus needs to be on how can we get to as many people as we can and set them free with the power of Christ that will deliver them. From the, from the bondage, the kingdom of darkness, and from the bondage of Satan, and anything else that's been forced in on their life. Poverty, sickness, disease, a sin. You know, we need to tell them something that's going to set them free. You know what I'm saying? We get churches get together and call themselves the Metropolitan Union Churches, and all the LBGT people come in and say, you know, the Bible's been mistranslated. God loves you and made you just like you are. That's not setting people free. That's damning them to hell. They're not setting them free. They're, they're telling them they can keep doing what they're doing. The Bible says, "He who does these things and practices them has no inheritance in the kingdom of God." Now, how can you, how can you see that we're trying to make this church? People don't have to do anything. People have churches that come in and say, "You know, it's all right. You can want to take you want to grow." That's not the power of God to set them free. Now you are empowering them. 
God wants people free, not bad. He wants to liberate the power of Christ. And once again, he will do it. And not bad. Amen. So why are you here? What's your purpose? Don't know that word purpose. Everybody's got a definition for purpose. You know? What's my purpose? Some of the Christians have been too much time trying to figure out what the purpose is, but they don't do anything. It's like Brian with the Bible, so that city's full of them. They all hang out in the mall, they hang out here, and they end up with a little prayer group, they end up with a little, you know, their little group doing this, they go around prophesying over everybody, whatever they're doing, and they get into all God's calling you here, and, and then they go on staff to come to big church, and once they get enough on, they go out and start their own church, to get their own church going. Yeah. And why don't you go to some place that ain't nobody? Everybody's trying to figure out what their purpose is. That's a confusing word in the word of Christianity. What do we mean by this word? Now, oftentimes, people think purpose is how much we're doing. You know, how big is our ministry, and how big are our actions to others. Um, this, we, we, let's read it this way. Some people think that, that purpose is the perception of what others think you're doing for God. Now, we're always looking for that somebody's out watching that. You know, you know, I've got to have a purpose here. Just somebody's asking what I'm doing. And tell me I'm doing this for Jesus. Somebody told us, uh, this is John said, since he knows everything about God. So I'm going and helping in the church and going on missions trip does not make any difference in the world. Man, I just think, I mean, Aaron and Earl did not make a difference for these ladies and gentlemen. Bless their hearts. They're stupid people. They can just go out there on their own and go out and get Now, in this bunch, they're going out there and they're trying to make a problem. If I do revelation, you can lay hands on them. You will be taller, and lay hands on them will grow. So if you're just under five foot two, you go out there and get the tall. What if you're seven foot and want to be six foot? And I got a shrinking ministry. I got a shrinking ministry. I need one. I got a little. You want to get in there with me? Stop worrying about what other people think. Stop being concerned with somebody else thinks, especially the loud mouth. How am I doing this? How am I doing that? What did you do? That's kind of pressure. Manipulation is what it is. When, when, uh, and what happens is people, they, they start trying to get into the limelight, you notice. But they're just misinterpreting God's purpose. But what happens is it begins to frustrate the believer. I'm not doing what those things do. He's not supposed to do the things they do, so he gets out there and you do. Amen. Hello. If God told you to do one thing, you do what God told you to do. I don't know. You know. People begin to measure the lives against other believers' lives. Their faith ventures against other people's faith ventures. Our blessings are systematically compared to others to determine if we're fulfilling our purpose or if, we're, um, if we are um, doing what God wants us to do. I my telling those church not, not all that long ago. Came off, sat down and said, God told me to put my money where it's making a difference in me. You're not making a difference. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. You're not making a difference. God told me to get my money. I know what's making a difference. Um, now, God said, bring power to Christ. It's not your money. It's His power, number one. How can't we concern whose church is bigger than ours? How can't we concern if so and so's got 400 people and he's got 40 or 50 or 60 or 70? I can't be concerned. I'm right. Because God told me to do what I'm doing. And so it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. I'm trying to do what God told me to do. And if I go comparing myself with somebody else, it, it's rough. I tell you, I, I, I've done it, been there, and it's nothing but a, it, it's an endless circle of depression. Why? Now, I remember uh, John Newsday. He's up in Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania. It's north of uh, Pittsburgh, where he is. John had uh, gone out with Ed Everett, what we about? Almost, not quite, but almost two years in Africa, starting churches after they would hold crusades. They would go in and have two, crusades, 50,000 people a night, and then the churches didn't have anybody. They, and the churches go from 80 to 1,200 in six weeks. Boom. And the pastors didn't know what to do. What can you imagine? Can you imagine that, you know, what happens in six weeks? Six weeks of the day, we're having six services on Sunday morning just to get the people in. And, and we got the same number of workers because everybody, because the 1,160 are new. Hello? 
know that John Wesley's church, after 25 years, is still in the kingdom of Jesus. John Wesley.
I didn't know enough about faith, like what like Brother Hagen used to say. If your faith was dynamite, exploded, you wouldn't have enough to blow your nose. That's where I was. I, I mean, I just, I knew God called me, and I was just doing what God told me to do, but I didn't know anything about faith. I grew up in a cult, man. We just, we waited for God to do something. We prayed till we got through. I mean, we spent hours at the altar, Harry. You know, all kinds of, listen, I, 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 I love that part of my heritage. I think God's going to take some care But I didn't know anything about how to believe God. I didn't know anything about it. That's why I was going to the rainbow. I learned how to believe God so I could begin to make me and know how to believe God. But the car had to go. Jane and I were sitting at the stoplight day before yesterday at the wild wind at uh, uh, Penny and, and um, just east of the window. And we looked over there, and there was a 1978 Chevy S79. We outside of 2004. And we went down in the box, box of things that we just got. I mean, it was covered. We were riding the floor and all that. You know, it's going to be cool to have one of those. It sure is. Because we paid it in there. You know, not a billion. But I can't even have it. Because I had to live for Jesus. And my call to him and serving him was more important than my cool call. I didn't care what I had to drive. I didn't care what it took. I was going to live. I would sacrifice whatever it took to sacrifice to obey and to follow him. And the church has got to get back to that point. We've got to stop saying, church, do something in it for me. Instead, bring something to the table. And make a deposit. And make things better. I, I look back and go, we're so excited to go to Ben Raymond for the past two years. You know, they, you know, uh, they knew this and called them. Yeah, they've learned things. But basically, what they've learned has, a lot of kids are hearing what they're hearing for the first time. They've heard it their whole life. So it's been, they've been able to take it to a deeper level with what they've learned. It's not that they, 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 I'm not trying to say they knew everything they did. I'm telling you, not, there's a lot of things that it's not everything they've heard. They've heard before. So they, they've been able to build on the foundation and go higher with it. But what I'm asking is this. When they left, they're leaving their next month. They were arrested in a bad place in the South. They started the ambassador program there. I was looking at pictures of they can run a college weekend just this weekend. We got all these kids coming out with ambassador shirts on with the prospective students. That's something they didn't have before. You know? And, uh, and, and ideas about you know, how to do this and how to do this. All kinds of things they're leaving there and leaving it better than they found it. So we've got to learn to do things better. And I walk with the Lord. We're, 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 not, we're not to go through life as a church, as a truth of matter, with a wake of destruction in our past from church to church. We're to come in and build and, and, and to be a part and really be what God told us to be, number one. That's, that's one of the most important things we've ever done. Are you here? You're gone home. When you got born again, you didn't, you didn't hear about certain things. All you going to do is serve Jesus. I'm telling you, man, if they had a Bible over here, you were over there all week, and of course, in your church, you may have said of these churches that, you know, we're doing away, our church doesn't get here. That, I told one of them, it's like, that may be used to say, we have church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and we do tonight, and then we have church Sunday. Now, I expect you to be here any other time, go visit anywhere you want to go visit, just come back and we have church. Amen. That's what it's supposed to be. Isn't that right? It's just part of a calling. It's part of a purpose. You got some, but there, there is a purpose. We have a job to do. And the church is not just about what's in it for me. And that's the problem we come to today. Is we, we motivated and moved our churches to a place. It's about making people happy instead of growing people and making them effective. Did you know there will be things you're going to do as a Christian that are not going to make, not going to make you happy? To do it yourself once or another than the Lord. Oh, yeah, we don't know. I don't believe that. We don't have Christ. I tried to get the first church that was shaking my head. Hello? Are you here? I just want to tell you that that's our church. If I ever go to another church, they won't have Sunday night service. Oh, because they're not Sunday night service. Like that, we have 
But they went somewhere else. They went to the church at Jackson. They said, they don't think they wanted to see them where they went. I'm going to stop there getting home from that service. What? I mean, there's some kind of things that I looked at today. Huh? That's right. I'm going to drive, but I don't have to work. Our church has Sunday services. Why? Because people come and people need to have meetings. We have miracles on Sunday nights. People are set up on Sunday nights that don't come in all the time. They've got ministry to, and they wouldn't have got ministry to. We just need to have our money. They, 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 they make plenty to get there. Hell. You know what I say about Christmas? Yeah. Every yeah, time I do, uh, I have a five, six, one and three quarter inch holy day. Yeah, I just bring it up to the day. Yeah, but what about the people who come to the community other time? That's the only time they can get to work together. That's the work Sunday morning. The only time they get church is a Sunday night service. And they realize yeah. that they can keep up with the plan, go to the Baptist Bible Church, go on Sunday, go to the church, go on Sunday night service, and then move on. You can also have a Sunday night service, but I can just sit right there. And then your wife tells you, but the people who say, no, I've got my flesh getting back. Everybody's got flesh. Anybody that don't have flesh? Anybody in there have flesh? No, y'all know they're just raising their hands. Five people raise their hands because they have flesh. That's rain. All right. It's six minutes to twelve. In the next six minutes, I'm going to cover the last 40 minutes of my message. Count of the day. Raise your face. Are you a man of faith? <laughs> you have no basis for faith, do you? <laughs> All right. How many people, when you first got saved, lived your life with a desire to please Him with all of your heart? That's what you wanted to do. Then, as you got older and you got, you know, responsibility for all the things took over or hurts or different things happened, you know, but sometimes that gets dropped off and then you just kind of send the church because it's the thing to do. It's not, you're not coming because you have a desire to please Him. You're not coming because it's your, it's your passion to hear the Word and be filled with His presence. It's not your passion to live that way. Come on now. We've got to be doing that. Amen? Are you here? Well, Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Matthew, which is the great commandment of the law. And Jesus says unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On this, these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophet. In other words, loving God with all your heart, soul, and strength. First got saved, how many you know you come to love God? You first got saved. You're, you're, you know, your walk with God should not be like about half, you know, the same thing from the marriage thing. You, know? you got the honeymoon period, and after that, you settle down in your life. I had a woman who came in one time with a marriage counselor with a husband, sitting there with a pastor, and she said, What's wrong? She said, He doesn't love me anymore. And the pastor was over the man, and he said, What about it? He said, Well, I do love him. He said, he looks at her and says, why do you say he doesn't love me anymore? And he never tells me. <coughs> he looks at back at the man and says, well, what about it? He said, well, I told her that he got married and I hadn't changed my mind, so I didn't think that he should say anything. That didn't work. That just didn't work. Walking with the Lord is the same way. You can't have this, well, like I got saved, I thought I committed and I love it, and that's it for the rest of your life. God wants a relationship with you. You know, love with all your heart, your soul, and your strength. And, and, and everything is in you. It's a daily walk with Him. Amen. And we used to sing that song in the church, Just a Closer Walk with Him. Remember that? Just a closer walk with Him. Granted, Jesus, hear my plea. Daily walking closer to you. Let it be, dear Lord. Let it be. Now, we came along with some word of faith teaching. All right, you're about to give me a quick thing that you're going to get. Then why is the New Testament that says, draw not on the God and draw not on the thing? So we, just, we, we, we kind of took some truth in the, in the charismatic word of faith revival 
and emphasizes to the point and puts people into a place of there's nothing I need to do because I've already got it all. It's kind of like the race thing. A lot of things we're doing now are very similar to what we did 20 years ago in faith. Very similar. Overemphasizing the truth until we bring error in in other areas. Yes, I'm born again. And I'm as righteous as I'll ever be because I'm born of God. But my walk with God today is that. My fellowship with Him today is that. And just because I'm as close to Him in relationship as I'll ever be, I'm not as close to Him in fellowship as I'll ever be. Amen? That's something you got to work on. That's something you do. Hello? So we, so we, we think things that, that make people think, and they begin to act that way. Well, the level of your value in your heart. Listen, I love my wife. I told her 25 left the house. She said, you know, she needs to come away because I have to come away. And then, uh, she said, I love you. On the way to the house, I love you. And she said, well, 30 some years ago, I said, I love you. And I ain't changed your mind. Hello. And then maybe over yourself. He's um, command pain to all, all, all the law of the Lord. Okay. And for this is one for the way Paul says to me, the Lord of his Christ to die his death. You know how long it's been hidden Christ? Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ, and never lived, I live, yet not I. Christ lives in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave life and gave himself for me. None of us I live, yet not I. Christ lives in me. is to represent Him and to live for Him and let Him live through us. Not, what can I get out of the church? Hello? People tell me the church is wanting every kind of ministry in the world and it's single ministry. And I give that to some degree when you get the straight side and they get down to single to justify it. But you can't pick a church just because they've got a single ministry. It might just be the dating game that's going on over there. Hello? Who can we pick up this week? And don't think that we can even go in there and just look for a quick fix. They'll tell you the Lord gave you this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you want the Lord did show you. His name is the other book. The maggot Lord. Lord of the maggot. The other brother means Lord of the flies. Flies come from maggots. You get, come on, guys. The maggot guy told you it was okay to do that. Somebody go help me out this morning. Yeah, let's hit me if you can. Man, you can't make decisions. What about a church that if, if enough people show up? You can, you can have a single grand show up. You know? We've got to stop making decisions based on what, what's in it for us. Honestly, we've got to make decisions based on what the Lord wants us to do. What does the Lord want us to do? What does God have for us to do? What can we contribute to here? Amen. Amen. All right. Colossians 3 1. We're going to stop right here. I got a bunch of people. Verses one through four. If you be, if you be then, <laughs> you tell that by all my If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth, and on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, and not, and not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and the life is here with Christ in God. That when, you know, that when Christ is all that like shall appear. You are dead, and your life is here with Christ in God. Wow. Set your affections on things that love and not on the earth. And I say that has a relationship to that has a relationship to a local church. It can't be about you. Now, yes, they need to be in the church of the Lord. They need to be, you know, if, if you're born, if you're just filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to be in the Holy Ghost church. You're going to do just some church on that to, to, to preach the sons of the devil. That's not real productive for you. It teaches you know that you can't believe God, God made you sick, God will kill you. That's not real productive for you. But out, outside of those things, you still can't make decisions based on life's carnal things. 
what I think of half his feet. He's not that big. Hello? Is it your flesh that's already talking? Hello? He said, see? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take his hand over to our face and hold on to it and rub it. Yeah, come on now. He said, see? That's the dumbest reason you want to go to a church. He's cute. Like one baseball coach I heard about one time. He has players that come on the team and, and he, he said he can't play because Mama pops on the team. Well, you know what you see baseball players on the team? That's just carnal as carnal can be. Amen. We've got to get spiritual about this. Have it in my hand. Am I going to get the things I need? Spiritual speaking. To equip me for victory. That's where you need, you need to be. Well, God says go. God says go just because, you know, and, and I'll be honest with you. If you're going to a church and you're in that church and everything is just wonderful and God wants you to do it and you, you're supposed to be somewhere else, it's one thing. But if you're upset with the pastor, you're upset with the pastor's wife, you're upset with the leadership, you're upset with sister so and so, and all of a sudden you get a revelation you're supposed to leave, it ain't God. It's your dog on flesh. Come on now. It's because you can't walk in love and you can't do what you're supposed to. Now, if, if the Lord gets mean to you, I say, I'll tell you that that happens. And it's not nearly as much as we make it out to happen, but it happens. Here's Max of the world. And now, if you go to the Baptist church and you want to be first Baptist, you go to second Baptist, you've got to get a letter. From first Baptist. Am I right, Brother Bill? That pastor won't receive you to that church until that other pastor says you can go there. And Sheriff Mass, we can just start our own. Hello? And mess up God's plan. You can't mess up God's plan. Don't tell me that. He said, don't tell me that. All right. So, kind of went all over the place this morning, Bill. So many things I wanted to say. But we have to set our affection on Him. We have to set our affection on His plan. We got to, what I'm asking is this, we got to stop. The church has reached a stage of such self-centeredness that the church is all out there trying to tailor, using marketing techniques, tailoring their ministries and their churches to meet the demand of a self-serving congregation. They're not willing to submit their life to Christ and to His will and His purpose and His plan. Everybody just grunt, say, oh, me, or help me, Jesus. I don't care, but they don't know. Our churches are battling each other to get the numbers and coming up with programs that are draw the people in, but they're all aimed at me, me, me. What's in it for me? Can you imagine me going on television and advertising this way? If you're a child of going to church where it's all about you, well, they have everything you could desire in life. They have a cafe. They have furniture. You know, they have every kind of high-end, high-tech children's ministry program thing available. And you want to come to church where you're going to commit your life to God and you're going to sacrifice and you're going to work for Jesus and you're going to give up things in it that you want just so that the work of God can go for it to come on the faith and visit your church. Can you imagine how many people show up next Sunday? Amen. So we don't want to do that. How many, how many people know that you can be out of the prosperity center and fill it up? How about a sacrifice of commitment from you? Where's, where's the state of the church? And I'm, just, I'm a serious question. I'm not trying to be facetious or mock you. I'm serious. Where is the state of the church when everything we do is about Coaching people to come based on the Randy Ripoff and the Drew Dees and Wayne vision. And it's not a hunger for God. I'm not talking about fundraising, I'm talking about the church. People 
these churches because they want to make sure that's not true because that's what you're going to do. And the pastor said, well, come on in. Well, come on in. That one guy said, I'm not a preacher, but I'm sure we'll be together. So you're a preacher by the box. And it don't bother you. We got something that all of the other churches don't have. We got a lot of something. I'm telling you, church, it's a, it's a church. And you're here, I know I'm thinking, you're probably not thinking of several thousand people out there right now. First and after you've got services to, to preach, that's how they pass it up first on us. They feel our services in this church. I go back to the pastor. He said, Your services are our church. That's what preaches our church every week. This is just it's, 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 it's a locator for the church. I'm still talking. At some point in life, people usually grow up and they stop watching the offspring and the mom and the dad and the kid. And you stop taking them to a celebration station. Hello. That life is more than a game. There's something for us to do as a church. But we're so catered, we cater to that so much that everybody, that everybody just wants to see us. If I went to a celebration station for fun, every service, I don't know if I'm having a, 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 a picnic at a celebration station. It's just a little fun. There's things to do. Now, I know some of y'all are probably doing it this year. But when your kids get older, you have to stop going. Okay. Yeah, I know. Well, this is just like that's what you're going to have to do. Yeah, because you like going there. I like going there too. <coughs> and you don't go there when you're getting the go kart. I'm going to knock you off the horse. I revert. It's okay. It's something like that. You know what I mean? But we, we, we're training the church to live on what's in it for me instead of growing up to what can I give to reach the lost. And that's what we've got to get to. And that's what this church has to change. And we've got to grow the disciples up. And we've got to equip them for the work of the ministry. And we've got to stop playing the game and be the sheep. And we do this to Jesus. Get the world to go to hell. I said, go to the world to go to hell. You know, they're running advertisements once on television. You know, you saw the, the priest and the Jew and the Muslim all sit down and eat donuts together. What do priests and the Jew and the Muslim have to do and sing that in their voice for something or whatever God's done? Our God is God. He's done this. It's a Muslim. It's the priest who's telling me to be born again. To tell the Jew he must be born again. Jesus told me you need to be born again, then I said, if you know, look at me. So the Jews are different. Jesus didn't think so. He told the Jews, you must be born again. So let's get busy. Amen? Let's, let's, let's live for Jesus with the same passion and desire and commitment to the heavenly kingdom and to the kingdom of God. And stop demanding that everything is centered around what we want. And stop centering around what God wants. What does God give? What does God want? You to give. How are we going to hear that? What I want to do? I'm going to stop doing that. Me and God. Watch out, people who want to tell you. I'm going to tell you this. The Lord told me that I'm getting this to this. And the Lord told me this. And the Lord told me that. And the Lord said this. And I said, and you sit and listen to me going, that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. So the Lord told me, the Lord didn't tell you something the Bible didn't say. Or contrary to what the Bible says. Stand up. Anybody need to be saved? Anybody need Jesus? Not born again? You need Jesus in your life? Anybody backslidden? Not walking to God. 
and I'm not sure where the Holy Ghost is. You want to hear from someone else? I'll tell you. Because that's not born again. His lordship in my life and declare that Jesus is my Lord. And Father, I also come today recognizing that I've sinned against you again. But your word declares that if I'll confess my sin, you're faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I confess my sin before the throne of God. And I receive the cleansing of the blood of Jesus. Now, in Jesus' name. And so I thank you for sharing both of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for forgiving, born in you, walking in the light, and doing the light. And if you just believe that there's a peace to you right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming. Thank you for your time. And I think you see this because you love me. Okay. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Give the hand as it goes. Now, stretch your hands out for the Father. Father, we decree and declare that their spiritual need is fully met. We thank you to fill the spirit and walk to the light as you're in the light in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody else need benefit this morning? Anybody sit? We need to lay hands on you. We're going to let you go. You don't need to lay hands on for anything you're dealing with. All right. Now, Preacher, for the purpose, we can get saved. We can get restored to the Lord. Amen.